The next group to dominate Mesopotamia were the Akkadians. In 2332, Sumer came under domination of this group. We're not exactly sure where the Akkadians were from. Uh, we do know that it was somewhere near uh, Babylon and that they were a Semitic people, meaning that they, uh, it was sort of a, a proto, um, they spoke a language that was kind of an early proto version of Arabic and Hebrew, uh, which are some modern day Semitic languages. Um, but they came to conquer and control um, Sumer. Um, they were a very militaristic society, and they kind of ruled with an iron fist. Um, this is an image of, a, um, of an Akkadian king, probably the first Akkadian, or the, the king that conquered Sumer, uh, a guy named Sargon. Um, but we see that this is a, a damaged sculpture. This uh, is made from copper. It was part of a much larger sculpture. This was the head of a, of a statue. But it was destroyed many, many centuries years later by another people called the Medes people who came in in the 7th century BCE and destroyed the statue. But what I want you to, let's first of all, let's observe the um, way the, the, the sculpture is, is put together. Uh, we see a, a bearded male figure, so this is something we have seen back into the Sumerian culture, so we see an influence there. This beard, this symbol of wisdom. We also see on the top of the head um, a, a crown or a headdress, a symbol of kingly power. Um, you'll notice that the eyes have been gouged out. This is not just from the uh, destruction of the statue itself, but this was an intentional um, sort of um, violence <laughs> portrayed against the king. Um, you know, when oftentimes one culture comes in and takes over another culture, what will happen initially is statues, images, whatever it is, of rulership of that conquered culture will be destroyed, but also oftentimes disfigured as a symbol of of the net power that the new culture has over the culture that they vanquished. And I mean, this is something that um, even still today exists. Uh, I think about in um, the U.S. invasion of Iraq in um, the early 2000s, in 2003, one of the first things that American soldiers did was when they took over Iraq, when they took over Baghdad, was pull down the statue of Saddam Hussein as a symbol of um, as a symbol of power, as a symbol of the old rulership's lack of power. Um, so it's it's an Im image of disgrace. It's an image of destruction um, on those who were previously in charge. Another image uh, from ancient. Uh, Akkad I want to focus on is the victory stele of Naram Sin. This is another image of military power. Uh, here we see um, Naram Sin, the great grandson of Sargon, um, over a victory of a people called the Lullaby. This was uh, occurred in the Zagros Mountains. We see um, the king, we see um, Naram Sin dominating, so this use of hieratic scale, he is larger than everybody else, so you know immediately it's him. If we get a little closer to him, you can see that he is shown wearing horns, which was a symbol of godhood. So this is a guy who sees himself as a god. Um, so not only is he larger than everybody else because he is a king, but he is larger than everybody else because he is divine. Um, we see an image here of a, a, a page sort of trumpeting his victory. And then at the top of the mountain, and so once again we have this concept of the holy mountain, high places are holy places. At the top of the mountain we see an image of three stars. There might have been more, but this was destroyed when a group much later called the Elamites came in and stole this after their victory uh, in, Meso in Mesopotamia. Um, but these stars represent divinity, probably a, a sun god named Shamash. Uh, but ultimately, um, what matters is that these stars are there to sort of ordain the victory of Naram Sin over the Lullaby. Um, it's one thing to say, 
all right, I came in and I conquered you because I wanted to or my state wanted to. But if you say I came in and conquered you because the gods demanded it or the gods approved of it, then that gives you a certain amount of power, a power on par with the gods. And we already know that um, Naram Sin saw himself as godlike um, by the way he is dressed with these sort of divine horns. You will see pouring down the mountain on this poor lullaby guy here. And if you look closely, you see his feet are turned the other way. He's trying to get the heck out of Dodge uh, because he has just been conquered and he doesn't want to hang around. But you see this sort of script coming down from the mountain. Uh, this idea of the gods departing, or imparting, I should say, imparting a kind of divine wisdom onto uh, this victory. And what they are, what the script says is, is basically it's a record of the battle. So once again, this is sort of idea, the idea that this is a divine victory and this is divinely ordained by the gods. If we look at the image sort of holistically, you'll see that while it has certain visual strategies you're used to by now, um, we see those composite figures, we see the uh, the bullhorns, we see hieratic scale, um, Naram Sin is larger than everybody else. What we don't see are those strict registers, those strict bands that we have seen um, before in, in ancient Sumer. Those are gone here. What we have instead is sort of a, a, a wilder, more freeform uh, kind of uh, arrangement of the characters here. But if you look closely, you will see that we have sort of two halves of the image. On the left half, we have the soldiers of Anarim Sin, the Akkadian soldiers, who appear to be strong and powerful and in this kind of regimented sort of pose. And then we see this more chaotic depiction of the lullaby here. This is something we actually have already seen before in the um, Standard of Ur we saw this, this sort of difference between the conquered and the conquerors, this sort of chaos versus order. So ultimately, we're, what we're looking at is an image of divine power, an image of uh, God's ordaining a, a victory, which in a sense is a holy victory.